Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. Today is day two of Henry VIII, so I'd say we're still plugging away, but yesterday we just got to hear from the prologue, so I don't feel like we're really plugging at the moment. Anyway, we, today we get to hear from the Duke of Norfolk in Act 1, Scene 1. So yesterday the prologue just sort of warned us that this is going to be a very serious play, and if you came to this play expecting to laugh a lot, that's probably not going to happen. So Act 1, Scene 1 kicks off with the Duke of Buckingham, the Duke of Norfolk, and the Duke of Avergine. I'm going to look up the pronunciation on that and get back to you later. But anyway, at the moment, it's mostly Norfolk and Buckingham talking. And Buckingham's like, hey, how you been? And Norfolk's like, yeah, I was in France. Because uh, the king, King Henry VIII, was meeting with the king of France. And oh my goodness, let me tell you what was going on. And Buckingham is like, oh, I was like laid up in bed and not feeling really well for the whole time of that. And Norfolk is like, well then you lost the view of earthly glory. Men might say, till this time, Pomp was single, but now married to one above itself. Each following day became the next day's master, till the last made former wonders it. Today, the French all clickened, all in gold, like heathen gods shone down the English. And tomorrow, they made Britain India. Every man that stood showed like a mine. Their dwarfish pages were as cherubins, all gilt. The madams, too, not used to toil, did almost sweat to bear the pride upon them that their very labor was to them as a painting. Now, this mask was cried incomparable, and the ensuing night made it a fool and beggar. The two kings, equal in luster, were now best, now worst, as presence did present them, him and I, still him in praise, and being present both, t'was said they saw but one, and no discerner durst wag his tongue in censure when these sons, for so they phrase him, by their heralds challenged the noble spirits to arms. They did perform beyond thought's compass. That former fabulous story, being now seen impossible enough, got credit that Beavis was believed. So it's it's a bit of a mouthful. It's a bit of a mouthful, this monologue. But basically he's saying that Henry VIII and the French king met and were just sort of like outdoing each other in terms of glitz and glamour and pomp and circumstance and all that kind of thing. And, and one of them would lead one night and everybody would be like, oh, that's the best thing I've ever seen. And then the next night the other one would have taken charge and everybody's like, oh, that's the best thing that I've ever seen. So it, it was basically there was this big, really, really sort of beautiful meeting in France um, between King Henry VIII and the French king. Um, and then in, as this discussion goes on, they discover that the meeting was actually set up by Cardinal Wolsey, who's somebody that we're going to want to keep in the back of our minds because he's going to be important later in the play. And Buckingham has some very serious thoughts, some very serious thoughts. He has, he has cast judgment on Cardinal Wolsey, and we will get to hear a little bit more about that tomorrow. Um when we hear from Norfolk sort of trying to talk Buckingham down. Anyway, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for more. But yeah, when kings get together, it's party. I'll see you tomorrow for more Shakespeare.